It's Ramadan. And Allah descends. Allahu Akbar. Comes down and he says, is there anyone who wants something from me? I will give it to them. Allah is saying that to you. Put your hand up, those of you who got work, who still have to go to work. Okay, that's a lot of you guys, mashallah. And those of you who have school, put your hand up, which is, mashallah, I think majority of you guys. Even you guys, I've got something for you guys. The time that you're most closest to Allah is when you're in a state of sujood. Beg him, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the things that you ever wanted. There's no one between you and Allah. Speak to him directly. Allah said, tell my slaves, Udu'uni, ask me, astajib lakum. I will accept your dua. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Lahu alhamdul hasan wa thana ul jameel. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah. Yaqulu alhaqqa wa huwa yahdi sabil. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. Akhiru al anbiya'i fi dunya asra. Wa ajalluhum yawm al qiyamati sha'nan wa dhikra. Sallallahu wa malaikatahu wa salihun min khalqihi. Kama wahad Allah wa arrafa bihi wa da'a ilayhi amma ba'd. Yesterday and today, I have been working on my personal schedule that I plan, inshallah ta'ala, to follow through the month of Ramadan. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes this blessed month of Ramadan a successful one for each and every one of us. My brothers and sisters, if you haven't sat down yet to write down a schedule and plan out how your Ramadan is going to be, then inshallah ta'ala, I want to share with you my humble schedule inshallah with you. And may that, that might be a template for you, inshallah ta'ala. And I know you guys are going to do better. May Allah preserve and honor each and every one of you. The first thing that we do, brothers, Ramadan has not come yet. So the first thing that we need to do is we have to work on our intention. Now, here, this moment, today, tomorrow, is the niyyah, the intention. So these are steps that we need to take for our intentions. Put your hand up, those of you who got work, who still have to go to work. Okay, that's a lot of you guys, mashallah. And those of you who have school, put your hand up, which is, mashallah, I think majority of you guys, you can come with an intention for that as well. The Prophet, he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مَا أَكَلَ أَحَدٌ طَعَامًا No one eats provision. خَيْرًا مِنْ أَنْ يَأْكُلَ مِنْ عَمَلِ يَدِهِ Than what you worked for. There is no rizq better than the rizq you sweat, you sweat for. وَإِنَّ النَّبِيَّ اللَّهِ and the Prophet of Allah, Dawood, كَانَ يَأْكُلُ مِنْ عَمَلِ يَدِهِ He used to eat from what he worked for. So when you're going to work, you know that this is something the Prophet of Allah, Dawood alayhi salam, he used to work and he would eat what he worked for. So even that though, it's a blessed month of Ramadan, what you're doing is what? You're going to get reward for it. But come with the intention. And don't underestimate intentions. Intentions are very strong. And Imam Muslim narrated in his Sahih that the Prophet he said, Ida tahaddatha abdi, if my slave intends something, he talks to him, his nafs and he says, I'm going to do this. If he says that to himself, I'm going to do this. The Prophet he said, فَإِلَّمْ يَعْمَلُ Even if he doesn't do it, كُتِبَ لَهُ حسنة, A reward will be written for you. Just because you told yourself, I'm going to do this. So now let's do that. Let's come with the intention that these are the things that we're going to do. And even if we don't get the opportunity to do it, we get the reward inshallah ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, the entire day, when you're driving, don't be talking on the phone and conversing and text messaging. Let your tongue can be consistent on the remembrance of Allah. A lot of people are driving and they forget this is the time of dhikr. Are we all together, brothers? Adhkar, going to work and coming back. Your tongue is consistent. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al azim. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al azim. That's what you say. These are the intentions that we're going to come with, and the, the way that we're going to fulfill those intentions, I've written a schedule, inshallah ta'ala. Um, and inshallah, I hope الكريم, we can all follow through with it and even do better. Number one, the intention we're going to come with is Khatmul Quran, to finish the Quran. That's an intention you want to come with. You want, inshallah ta'ala, this month to finish the Quran. Even if you struggle and you can't read the Mus'haf and you've never studied the Quran and you have not read the Quran and you don't know how to read the Quran, guess what? A portion and listen to it. Put headphones in and say, Ya Rabbi, 
I didn't manage to memorize the Quran. But I will listen to your words. Not listening as a background noise. No, it's a set. You sit down, you cross your legs, you open the mushaf, and you follow through with it. If it's transliteration, you put your finger on it, you follow through with it. The second intention is repentance. My brothers and sisters, if you look at the deen, our deen, you find that the concept of al-istighfar is connected to the doing of actions. Even when you do good, you still have to do istighfar and ask Allah for forgiveness. When you finish your salah, what do you say? As soon as you say, Salaamu Alaikum, Salaamu Alaikum, what do you say? Why do you say that? You just prayed. Mistakes that occur. When Ramadan finishes, what do you do right after it? What do you pay? What did the Prophet say about Zakatul Fitr? Tuhuratan lissa'imi. It's a purification for what? The individual who was fasting, the mistakes and the shortcomings that occurred from him, it's a form of istighfar. Nabiullah Muhammad's life, salawatullahi wa salamun alayhi, what was he told to conclude it with? Ida ja'a nasrullahi wal fath wa ra'ayta nas yadkhuluna fi deeni lahi afwaja, fasabbih bihamdi rabbika wa astaghfirhu. Innahu kana tawaba. 23 years of calling to the deen, he's told to ask Allah for forgiveness. So there's a bond between istighfar and good deeds. Before and even after. So now you need to repent. If this is dirty, can you pour water inside it? Yes or no? And no, no. You need to clean yourself now. Today and tomorrow is al-istighfar, a tawbah, getting away from all of the nasty things, all of the things that were bad habits. You need to clean yourself. Are we all together, brothers? And we all, every single one of us, we're full with sins. May Allah forgive us for our mistakes and our shortcomings. The next thing is, write a schedule, which is what we're going to do today, inshallah ta'ala. You write a schedule, a practical step. When I wake up in the morning, until I go to sleep, I'm going to do this. In the morning, when I wake up, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. You plan out everything that you're going to do. I won't go into it, even I've planned out what I will eat. But that's not something you guys need to know. But you plan out even to the point of what your iftar is going to be and your suhoor is going to be. Plan out everything. So you don't waste time on what you're going to eat and you're going to uh, have. Also, start listening to lectures, reminders regarding Ramadan. So the spirit is up. Right now you need to start listening to lectures, reminders. Download beneficial videos of speakers. Just listen to them. About Ramadan, what you should do, get the spirit up. Because what is waiting for you is 30 or 29 nights or, or days of blessing and khair. So you have to, as we say in the UK, hype yourself up. So yeah, you have to get that energy up. So when it comes, inshallah ta'ala, you get the most out of it. Learn the do's and the don'ts. There's the heart softening we spoke about, lectures you need to listen to. Ahkam. What is halal? What is an haram? Get download and take lessons today and t tomorrow. That's your job. What can I not do in Ramadan and what can I do? If a woman is pregnant, what can she do in Ramadan? Does she have to pay fidya? Or does she have to bring back the fasting? If she's breastfeeding, all of that, alhamdulillah, there's a large range of speakers that you can download and benefit from who have spoken about these topics. Are we all together, brothers? You're not going to be excused for ignorance whilst YouTube is around. Huh? You're not going to be excused. The knowledge is present. You need to sit down and start to learn. If there's lectures and classes happening in your local masjid now, even better. Go and participate and listen to it, inshallah ta'ala. Also, look at your salary that you make, your income and your savings. And set aside money that you're going to be given in this blessed month of Ramadan. Every day, plan out what you're going to be given. Schedule it. This is the amount I make a month. This is, inshallah ta'ala, what I plan to give out in this blessed month of Ramadan. 30 days and increase it more in the last 10 nights. If you're going to, inshallah ta'ala, take someone and break their fast, notify those people that you're going to invite. Let them know in advance. 
You're going to be with me on this day. You're going to be with me on this day. Plan it all out. The people are going to break fast with you. Even if you give a person a date, you get the reward of that person fasting without the fasting being reduced from them. You don't have to give them a meal. Just the date and water, you get the reward. Are we all together, brothers? One, uh, I think it was the COVID days, huh? when Ramadan entered, and I was caught up on the road. And I, on the road, there was a man standing there. And he was giving out water. This is the UAE. He was giving out water and dates. And I just thought about it. Subhanallah. As I was driving, how much reward that individual is making. All he's giving out is a water and dates. And everyone who he has given it to is eating that date and having that water. He's just taking their reward. That's the wise person. Every corner he's looking at how much reward can I make from here. Every turn, what can I do in this month and seize it. In the dunya, when we look at people who invest and think like that, we say, well, this guy's a good money maker. But when it comes to akhirah, we should also have that as well. Every opportunity is a way to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this blessed uh, month. Those are the things that you do prior to, inshallah ta'ala, uh, before Ramadan comes in. Now Ramadan has entered. It's called the schedule of the fasting person. This schedule is not restricted to the person who's fasting. This could even be done if somebody is not fasting. For whatever reason, it does not mean that you lose out reward. We start from f before Fajr. Because as Muslims, the night comes first before the, before the day. The night comes first. Qiyam. We start from the night. Your tarawih. Brothers and sisters, do not leave out the tarawih. Start with the imam and finish with the imam. People are leaving after four and they're leaving after this. My brother is only 29 nights. My brother is 30 nights. Billahi alay, can you not just give Allah those 30 nights or those 29 nights to the fullest? Start with the Imam, Allahu Akbar, and finish with him. And guess what? If you do do that, you will get the reward of praying the entire night, even if you go home and sleep after that. But you have to finish with the Imam. And finishing with the Imam does not mean that you leave with the first Imam. If there's two Imams, one leaves the first four, and then the second one leaves the second four. You can't say, I'm with the first. If he does his first four... I'm out. Now you finish with the imam means the salah. The entire prayer that you pray. Are we all together? From the first to the end, you finish it. If it's 11, if it's more than that, you pray from the beginning. Allah praised the righteous people. قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ إِنَّمَا يَتَذَكَّرُ أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ Are they equal? The one who knows his Lord and the one who doesn't know. Who's the one that knows his Lord? The one who's up at night praying, begging. تَتَجَافَى جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِعِ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ And you know what my brothers and sisters? It's Ramadan and Allah descends. Allahu Akbar comes down and he says, is there anyone who wants something from me? I will give it to them. Allah is saying that to you. And what you're doing is, you're walking out of the masjid at that time that he's saying that, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are we all together, brothers? That's the month we don't do this. From the first to the last rak'ah, salamu alaykum, salamu alaykum, that's when we leave the masjid. The second thing, my brothers and sisters, that you should not miss, is your program. So we started from at tahajjud Second one is the suhoor. Do not miss the suhoor. The Prophet encouraged the suhoor. He said, Tasaharu fa inna fi suhoori baraka. Have suhoor. Don't ever miss the suhoor. And when you have the suhoor, there's an intention of having the suhoor. You get rewarded. I told you, Ramadan is seizing. So the Prophet said, I'll do it. And I'll tell you something, my brothers and sisters. I've actually seen. The, yani myself and also through other people the people who have suhoor 
generally stay up, work, the Ramadan doesn't get to them, they don't lose energy, that's the wisdom behind it. Ramadan is you're awake, you're working, you go work. So have good food at suhoor. Number three, after the suhoor, ask Allah for forgiveness, subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-istighfar. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Until Salatul Fajr. Till the Adhan of Fajr. You've, you've, you've eaten your suhoor. Please don't go back to sleep. Al-istighfar. Allah said about the believers, وَبِلْ أَسْحَارِهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ That the righteous people, they are the ones who ask Allah for forgiveness, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Tawbah, before the day starts of Ramadan. Are we all together? Then the Adhan of Fajr goes off. Don't go to the masjid yet. For the men, pray two rak'ah in your house. Pray what? Two rak'ah in the house. Follow the sunnah, revive the sunnah. The Prophet, he said, Raka'ata, am a raka'ata yi fajr, khayru min dunya wa ma fiha. Am a hadith, another hadith says, Raka'ata al fajr. The two rak'ah of fajr is khayru min dunya wa ma fiha. It's better than this dunya and everything that's in it. Are we all together, brothers? Al Imam Muslim narrated this in his Sahih. Once you've, the adhan has gone off, don't say, oh, between the adhan and the iqama, there's 20 minutes or 25 minutes. No. You've prayed, right? Put your shoes on, get the boys ready, and say, let's go and go to the masjid. You go to the masjid very early. The Prophet, he said in the hadith, وَلَوْ يَعْلَمُونَ مَا فِي الْعَتَمَةِ If they knew what was in the isha, وَالصُّبْحِ لَأَتَوْهُمَا وَلَوْ حَبْوًا if the people were to know the reward that is in Isha, in the Masjid, Jama'ah, and the Fajr, they would have come even if they were crawling. Even if you're, you can't even walk, they would, you would come. Once you enter the Masjid, do, and you, you sit down, you, you come very early, you pray Tahiyatul Masjid. Again, another two reward. Tahiyatul Masjid. Once you've done your Tahiyatul Masjid, and you've prayed, and take your time. In the Ruku' beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the things that you want. أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَهُوَ سَاجِدْ The time that you're most closest to Allah is when you're in a state of sujood. Beg Him. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the things that you ever wanted. There's no one between you and Allah. Speak to Him directly. وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ اُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Allah said, اُدْعُونِي Ask me أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ I will accept your dua. Umar رضي الله عنه used to say, I do not carry the burden. I do not carry the burden of asking myself whether my dua is accepted. I don't, that's not a burden I carry. Hey, I know if I make the dua, my, my dua will be accepted. Because Allah said, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمُ ادْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Ask me, I will give it to you. So for you not getting it is because you didn't even ask for it. So you, the sujood that you go into, you beg Allah. That's the time you're closest to Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once you've finished your two rak'ah that you prayed, Remember, you're still between the adhan and the iqama. Sah? The iqama hasn't been done. Sit down and raise your hands. The dua is not rejected. Dua la yuraddu bayna al adhan wal iqama. The Prophet he said, the dua is not rejected between the adhan and the what? And the iqama. It's not rejected. It's not rejected. It's accepted. And there's so many things that we need to ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. We need to beg Allah for our, our, our personal situation. We need to beg Allah wa ta'ala, for the situation of our Muslim brothers in Palestine and other places in the world. So my brothers and sisters, this is the opportunity you beg Allah. That Allah rectifies the situation of the Muslims. If you've begged and you've done your dua, sit down and recite Quran. Start reciting the Quran. The adhan will go off inshallah ta'ala. Sorry, the iqama sorry, would go off. And you pray the jama'ah. Once you finish the salah, and you say, Salamu alaykum, assalamu alaykum, this is Fajr. Do not move from your position. Don't move. Stay in the position that you are. Don't move. Until the sun rises. The Prophet said, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِذَا صَلَّ الْفَجْرُ If the person prays Fajr, and he remains in his place, until the sun rises, then he prays, before the, uh, uh, he stays in place, until the sun rises. Then he, after that, he praises what? Praise, praise what? Two rak'ah. 
Hey, what's the reward for that person? Hajj and Umrah. Is that a reward you want to miss out in the month of Ramadan? No, Allah. As I said to you, now is when you look at every good deed that you can do in the day. My brothers and sisters, my advice, this is my personal advice, I would remain in that place until the sun sets, the sun rises, pray my two rak'ah, go home, and I will read Quran until Dhuhr. Every juice can be read in half an hour. That's if you go in good paste. If you go a bit too fast, you can go 20 minutes. But half an hour is decent. 30 minutes you can finish a juice. Are we all together? If you just do one juice a day, you can finish the Quran at least once. But my advice is that this month is the month of the Quran. It's about finishing the Quran as much as you can. It was said about Imam Shafi'i that he used to finish the Quran once in the morning and once at night time. That's not including his prayers and his qiyam. So he would finish the Quran 60 times in the month of Ramadan. How many times? 60 times. I looked at it. It took him, if we go to 30, 30 minutes, 15 hours every day. 40 hours, taqriban. 14 hours Shafi'i was reading Quran. That's not including his what? His qiyam, his suhoor, and his iftar. In other words, all he was doing was what? Reading the Quran. Are we all together, brothers? If you can do that, فَنِعِمَّاهِ If you can't like him, you can finish it every seven days. And that's what the Sahabas used to do. The seven-day program is as follows. You start from Surah Al-Fatiha. It's called Fami Bishawq. What's it called? Fami Bishawq. Fami Bishawq, it's an acronym, right? Each letter represents a surah. Fami, the fa is for Surah Al-Fatiha. Starts from Fatiha. Fami, up to Surah Al-Ma'ida. Fami, fam. Fa. From Fatiha you start and you go the first day to Surah Al-Ma'ida. Alhamdulillah. The second day, you start from Surah Al-Ma'ida and you go Fami Surah Yunus. Does that make sense? That's the second day. The third day, you start from Surah Yunus. Fami Surah Yunus, Fami Bi. From Yunus to Surah to Bani Israel, I'm a Surah to Isra. Fami bi, bi here is Bani Israel. So from Surah Yunus to Surah to Isra. What day is that? Yeah? The third day. The fourth day, you start from Surah to Isra and you go to Fami bi sh, shu'ara. So from Surah to Israel, uh, Surah to Bani Israel, I'm Surah to Isra, and you take it to Surah to Shu'ara. What, what day is that? The fourth day, Shu'ara. Then you take it from Surah to Shu'ara, Fami bi Shaw Shaw to Surah to Wasafat. Surah to Safat, right? Starts with Wasafat Safa. That what day is that? The fifth day, right? Fami. Bishaw. Then you take it from Surah to Safat and you take it to Surah to Qaf. Fami Bishawq. Sah? And the last day, which is the seventh day, you start from Surah to Qaf and you take it to Surah to Nas. Seven days you can finish the Quran like that. Are we all together? Those. There's a level, there's this serious, more serious ones. What do you want to do? Ten Jews every day. Ten Jews every day. How do you do ten Jews every day? You start from Surah Al-Baqarah or Surah Al-Fatiha 
and you go up to Surah Al-Anfal, وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ مَا غَنِمْتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ Ten juz. And then you start from وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ مَا غَنِمْتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ You take it to Surah Al-Naml فَمَا كَانَ جَوَابَ قَوْمِهِ Then, which is the second day. The third day you start from فَمَا كَانَ جَوَابَ قَوْمِهِ Surah Al-Naml and you take it to Surah Al-Nas. Ten, ten, ten. Are we all together, brothers? That's three days you finish it in. Then there's those who want to finish it every day. At least once. So 30 days they finish it. Those, what do they have to do? Uh, start from Fatiha to Nas. Sah? The point is, my brothers. Fattakullaha mastata'atum. Try your best. And the intention is to finish as much as you can and Allah will give you the reward. How do you do fami bi shawq? You have to sit one time and do it. I prefer that. To sit one time and, and read it. But what you could do is taqriban, approximately, it's about four juz, sometimes a bit more. You can read it after every salah. You can break it down after every salah. Fajr you read portion. After Dhuhr you read another portion. After Asr you read another portion. After Maghrib you read another portion. And after Isha you read another portion. You can do it like that. You can divide it up like that if you want to. Or what you could do is you can read it all in the morning. And what you will find my brothers and sisters is that day wallahi your energy your heart, your mind, everything is just going to be good. So that's in terms of the Qur'an. What you do, once you finish reciting the Qur'an, is as the Prophet wasallam mentioned in Sunnah Abi Dawood, you ask Allah to place barakah in your day for you. A lot of people forget that. Once you finish reciting your portion of the Qur'an, and you've read it, maybe up to Dhuhr, as I said, Beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, Allahumma inni as'aluka khayra ma fi hadha al-yaw. Oh Allah, I ask you the good of this day. Fathihi wa nasrihi wa nurihi wa barakatihi wa hudah. Oh Allah, I ask you the opening of this day, the barakah and the victory of this day, and the guidance of this day. Wa a'udhu bika min sharri ma fihi and I seek refuge in you from the evil that's within this day. وَشَرِّ مَا بَعْدَهُ And also the evil which is after it. Then I will say, brothers, ظُهُر, you go to sleep. ظُهُر, you pray and you go to sleep. With the jama'ah. You come to the masjid again and you pray Salatul Dhuhr and you go and you sleep. This sleep that you're going to sleep Come with the intention. Remember, you don't want to waste anything. Everything is reward. So before you go to sleep, you're saying, you're coming with the intention that this sleep is for what? It's for your qiyam, your siyam, and to get nearness to Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala. Mu'adh ibn Jabal, look what he said. He said, Inni la ahtasibu nawmati. I come with an intention for my sleep. Just the same way I have an intention when I pray and I fast. Allahu Akbar. Hatta my brothers and sisters, a lot of brothers, they provide for their wives and they provide for their children and they're missing the reward because they don't even come with the intention. And do you know how much you lose out by not coming with the intention? Everything you do, hatta ma taj'alu fi fami mra'atik, even the food that you place in the mouth of your wife, you can get reward for it. And we all, everything is ajar Lakin with an intention I do want to say Those brothers who are wealthy I'm just saying putting it out there Because some people are going to watch it Those of you who are wealthy Some brothers might have businesses They don't work a 9 to 5 job They've got business They would close their business If they knew that a month the rent can be paid But they make the rent from what? If they work Huh? If they work, they ha- that money that they worked is what they use to pay their rent. So if they close in the month of Ramadan, they're not going to get money for the rent. So they have to work. P- 
People whose situation is like that. If Allah has given you wealth and you say, listen, I know you're a person who's going to fast and pray and read a lot of Quran. And I know what's imprisoning you and preventing you from doing that. It's your company and your business that you have to do. How about this? I will pay your rent and the costs that need to be paid. Go in the masjid and inshallah ta'ala participate with us in these righteous deeds. If Allah has given you wealth and you do that for someone, you get the reward of that person's fasting. and that per- Do it for people who are like in gonna do ibadah. Not a brother who's going to go home and sleep and, yeah, someone you know who's going to do good deeds and benefit from it, who you know is known to be a pillar in the masjid, he's like a pillar, meaning the pillar never leaves the masjid, he's like that, he's always there praying, but what's stopping him is that he's got a job, if you can lift that from him, you'll get the reward, and this month is about reward. One of the things that the Prophet was praised for, and I'm going to talk about that inshallah ta'ala, is his generosity. The Prophet was generally a generous person. And his generosity will increase and it will go more in the month of Ramadan. Are we all together, brothers? It will just go up. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He would give. And he would give. Sallallahu Alaihi And he would give. What you give in this month, Wallahi ladhi la ilaha ghayru. Yawm al qiyamah. This is going to be the thing to help you. If you come with the intention, every dinar and dirham that you give, Aslan, this money was money Allah gave you, and He's testing with you, he's testing you with it to see what you're going to do with it. If you give, what you're going to get is so so much. I was pondering over the verse. Those people, Allah said, "Inna nut'imukum li wajhillah, la nuridu minkum jazaa'an wa la shukura." إِنَّا نَخَافُ مِنْ رَبِّنَا يَوْمًا عَبُوسًا كَمْطَرِيرًا فَوَقَاهُمُ اللَّهُ شَرَّ ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمِ وَلَقَاهُمْ نَظْرَةً وَسُرُورًا Allah said about these people إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ We feed you for the sake of Allah إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا Don't say thank you to us. Don't show us gratitude. This is not for you. It's for Allah. Look what they said. إِنَّا نَخَافُ the reason why we're doing this is we're scared. What are we scared of? Inna nakhafu min Rabbina. We're scared of our Lord Allah. Inna nakhafu min Rabbina. Yawman a day. Abusan kam tarira. A day where its punishment is severe. Wallahi my brothers. Look what Allah then says. Fawaqahum Allahu sharra thalika liyawm. Walaqahum nadratan wa surura. Allah saved them because of that. The punishment of the hellfire. This money, my brothers and sisters, the best investment is the money that you give for the sake of Allah. You've never lost that money. It's waiting for you on the other side. A day when you're most in need of it. So give. Ramadan is opening your hand. Fuqara, take people to your house. Feed them. Give them food. Invite people. And it's that moment. If someone is a new Muslim, take that responsibility of breaking their fast. Salatul Asri when it comes, before it comes, you pray four rak'ah. Before Asr, how much do you pray? Four rak'ah. According to a riwayah, the Prophet said, Rahim Allahu Mara'an, may Allah have mercy upon a slave. Salla qabla al Asr arba'an. Before Asr, he prays four. Before Asr enters, what do you do? You pray four. The masajids. Generally, what they do is they do a little reminder after Asr. The country. Sit and listen. If you, your local masjid does not do that, the area doesn't do that, no problem. I will tell you to go home and listen. Set yourself a target of either covering Tafsir Juz Amma, Siratun Nabi, something. Go on a program that you've, been, you've always wanted to get to the end of and set yourself. That is the time that you study. Take a notebook and study. I would say, what you study at that time, let it be something that is what? Related to the Quran, ideally. That's related to tafsir of the Quran and things like that. Take that. And also, what you're taking, let it not be ahkam and all of, no. Things that are going to be practical. 
the videos and the lectures you're listening things which are practical that you can go and straight away act upon so that time until iftar what do you do study tell your children to do the same if you guys if you want to share a book with them or you want to share a lesson with them or a class or you've prepared something for them mashallah those of you who speak arabic read the kitab by Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al-Uthaymeen called Majalis Ramadaniya. Sheikh ibn Uthaymeen has a risala. If, that, if your Arabic is even more advanced and higher, I would tell you to read the kitab Lata'if al-Ma'arif what he has written on the wadaif of the Shahr Ramadan. I tried to cover it in the last two days, but I, I didn't finish it. It's a lot of pages. It's about 128 pages. But you can finish it every day if you set yourself a portion for the entire month of Ramadan. You could go through it, inshallah ta'ala. Salatul Maghrib enters. When Salatul Maghrib enters, break your iftar with dates, water, and me personally, brothers, I would not advise you to munch. Munch in, in England is, is eat. I would not advise you to eat because it would show in your taraweeh. Brothers are like, ooh, ooh, vomit, like burping in the, in the salah. And they're stressing the other people around them, the smell that's coming out and all of that. So, so what would I say, brothers? Eat basic. And when you go into the masjid from Maghrib, don't leave the masjid until Fajr. Are we all together? Ramadan, this is Ramadan. If you do, let it be to go home and sleep. For me, Dhur and Asr, maybe a little bit after uh, Asr, will do me good for the day. But if you feel like, mashallah, you need a lot of sleep and that's how Allah created you, and Allah creates people differently, then what you do is you stay in the masjid until tarawih. Yani, until you pray tarawih. From Maghrib until tarawih. Salaam alaikum, salaam alaikum tarawih. Go home and sleep. And wake up before suhoor. Are we all together, brothers? That time that you're sitting between Maghrib and Isha, you get the reward of somebody who's praying even that you're not praying. Sah? The Prophet Sallallahu he said, anybody who prays a salah does not leave his position. You prayed Maghrib, you did not leave your position. And you're sitting waiting for the other prayer. You are as though someone who's engaged in salah, even if you're not praying. You're sitting there, you're just doing your adhkar. Are we all together, brothers? In between those times, based on people's schedules, the following things is what I would encourage you all to do. Keep knowledge of your neighbors. How are they sending them iftar? Exchange and giving them iftar. Calling family relatives, seeing how they're doing. If your family relatives are on the way to the masjid or walking back, go and visit them. You get a reward for it. Ask them their well-being. If you, Allah has given you wealth, the, the best sadaqah is the sadaqah that you give to your relatives. So if you give money to your sister and her family and you say, this is yeah, your brother-in-law, you say, look, this month, inshallah ta'ala, this is added to the shopping of your Ramadan and etc. Your relatives, your parents, your dad, your mom, you do that. My brothers and sisters, the thing that I will advise you all to stay away from, and I will encourage the sisters, brothers, do not use this opportunity for your wives to cook you dishes after dishes. Ittaqillah. She needs to worship Allah as well. It's not fair she's spending, she'll get rewarded, no doubt. And she gets rewarded for that. But she spends the whole day in the kitchen, and this is not increasing her iman. Don't burden your wife with all these different dishes. And Are we all together? Hatta when you bring people as guests, it's not a bad thing that you give them a decent, normal meal. Don't go out of your way. 
Are we all together? I remember a brother told me, and this is a sheikh I really look up to. His name is Sheikh Abdul Razak bin Abdul Muhsin Al Abbad. Hafidahullah Ta'ala. I love this man so much. And anyone who sees him will know that. He got, in, it's a story, it's a true story. A brother told me there was an invitation that happened in his house. It was either a high ranked ruler from Indonesia or Malaysia. I don't remember the two. I'm sorry. Malaysians and Indonesians, they get offended if you mix one with the other. But I love you all. So one of them came and visited him in his house. And the food that Sheikh Abdul Razak gave them was what he normally eats. And when they sat down, the brother said, Wallahi, the food we ate was so basic. And he said to him, Wallahi, that's what we eat and that's all we have. Takalluf. Of burdening, you put pressure on your wife, you put pressure on yourself, and you do too much. It's wrong, and it's wrong, and it is also wrong that in the month of Ramadan, there's food we connect to Ramadan, food that we connect to Ramadan. If I see samosas today, I think of Ramadan. Who else is like that? There's dishes that we think only when we see them, Ramadan. Sah brothers. The month that we were, yani the, what's the meaning of Ramadan? Is al-imsak, to refrain. And we've learned Ramadan is what? We eat this kind of food. And so it's Ramadan where you start seeing so much dishes cooked that are not cooked outside the month of Ramadan. Sah? Stay away from food. It's what's going to slow you down. Qahtani said in his Nuriya, La taqsha' batnaka bit ta'ami tasammunan fajuzumu ahli al-ilm ghayra simani. Don't feed yourself too much. And inshallah ta'ala, I would encourage you all to follow a good diet in this month. It's an opportunity to learn to stay away from oily stuff and don't kill your body and yourself. I want to talk about something I'm, I know you're all used to, you hear it a lot, but the reminder truly benefits the believer. My brothers and sisters, wallahi ladhi la ilaha ghayru, there is nothing greater than this blessed month that's coming our way. We have to feel this. We have to know it. It's an opportunity. It's a fursa. And the furas, the opportunities don't come very often. It is an opportunity. You can change your life. You can become something else. A lot of us don't yet realize what is coming to us. My brothers and sisters, Ramadan is a blessed month. The greatest month in the entire year. Twelve months. The best month is which month? Ramadan. And if you look at all of the previous prophets, who is the best of all of them? Nabiullahi Muhammad. And if you look at all of the previous scriptures, which scripture is the best? The Quran. And look at this, my brothers and sisters. All three of them combined in the month of Ramadan. Nabiullah Muhammad, the Quran first came down on him. In which month? In the month of Ramadan. The Quran, first of all, came down in the month of Ramadan. It started on the Prophet in the month of Ramadan. Are we all together, brothers? This month, that's why it's unique. The best speech. The greatest speech, the real miracle came down in this blessed month. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنُ هُدَى لِلنَّاسِ وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِّنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ The month of Ramadan is the month in which the Quran came down. So there's a strong bond between the Quran and the month of Ramadan and we will talk about that later. But there's no other month that the Prophet said the following about. The Prophet, he said, مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ No other month. Anyone who fasts the month of Ramadan with two conditions, in a state of iman and doing it for Allah's sake alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala, hoping reward from Allah, غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Your sins will be forgiven. 
Is that it? No. Man qama Ramadana imanan wa ihtisaba ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbi. And if you stand, so in the daytime you're fasting, and at the, at the night, what are you doing? You're praying. You're standing up in prayer. Your sins will also be forgiven. But two conditions. Imanan wa Is that it? La. The Prophet said it again. Salawatullahi wa salamun alayhi said, Man qama laylatal qadri imanan wa ihtisaba ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbi. Bukhari and Muslim both narrated these three hadiths in their sahih min hadith Abi Hurairah. Even Laylatul Qadr. Guess what? Fast in the month of Ramadan, your sins will be forgiven. Pray at night. Iman and Wahtisaba, your sins will be forgiven. And Laylatul Qadr, your sins will be forgiven. How could this month finish and your sins have not been forgiven? The Prophet said, Raghi ma anf. May the nose of a person be dusted. Dakhala Ramadan. The month of Ramadan entered, walam yughfar lahu, and you haven't been forgiven. Does that mean, how can it happen that a month, in no other month in the year, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free from the hellfire? People like this blessed month of Ramadan. Every single day, there are a number of people who have been taken off the list of the people of the hellfire, and they've been put on the, they've been put on the list of the people of Jannah. Opportunity. It's a goal. Something to look forward to. That's why the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before Ramadan enters, he would tell his companions, glad tidings. He would say to them, Atakum Ramadan, Shahrun Mubarak. Ramadan has made its way to you. A blessed month is coming. Farad Allahu Alaikum. Allah has made it obligatory on each and every one of you. Siyamahu, fasting it. Tuftahu fihi abwabu sama. The doors of the sama are opened. Wa tughlaqu fihi abwabu al jahim. And the doors of the hellfire are closed. Yani the doors of Jannah are opened. And the doors of the hellfire are closed. Wa tughallu maradatu al shayateen. And the tyrant devils are locked up. Lillahi fihi utaqa. Allah has in this month of Ramadan people in which he frees their necks from the hellfire. فِيهِ لَيْلَةٌ خَيْرٌ مِّنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرٌ There is a night within this month better than a thousand months. Look what then the Prophet he said. مَنْ حُرِمَ خَيْرَهَا فَقَدْ حُرِمْ Anyone who is prohibited, prevented from this blessing, then what have you been given in life? If you've been prevented from seizing this month and benefiting from then honestly, there is nothing in your life that you would truly seize. This hadith, Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali, in his kitab, Lata'if al-Ma'ari fi mali mawasim al-Ami min al-Wadha'if, and Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah in his Majmu' al-Fatawa, they mention that this hadith is an evidence that you give glad tidings to the people regarding the month of Ramadan. When Ramadan enters, you give the people glad tidings. It's a sunnah. Just like the Prophet here said, Atakum shahrun mubarak. Look what he said, Ibn Rajab. Qala ba'dul ulama, hadha al-hadithu aslun fi tahni'ati an-nasi ba'dihim ba'da bi shahri Ramadan. This hadith is an evidence that you give glad tidings to the people that the blessed month of Ramadan has come. Because, wallahi, brothers, you give glad tidings to someone regarding a blessing that they've, have, they've achieved. If you've reached Ramadan, wallahi, that's a blessing. So when Ramadan enters, message all the people that you know and say, Atakum shahrun mubarak. A blessed month has come. And give them the advice that the Prophet gave them, sallallahu alayhi wa sallama. My brothers and sisters, those who from amongst you, Allah has given wealth. This month is a month where you, if you can, you go Umrah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to a woman from the women of Ansar, he said to her, فَإِذَا جَاءَ رَمَضَانَ فَعْتَمِرِي 
If the month of Ramadan comes, go and do Umrah. Why? Because a Umrah in Ramadan, تعدل حجة وفي رواية تعدل حجة معي. It's equivalent to going to Hajj. Another wording says it's equivalent to going to Hajj with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it's a month you plan out what you're going to be doing step by step. The doors of Jannah are open, wallahi, my brothers. What is it that the believer lives for? What is your goal in life? Why are you here? What are you trying to achieve in this world? Is it not to attain Jannah? Is that not what you want? Yeah, my brothers, the salah that we pray, the fasting, the silatul arham, the ties of kinship, all the good that we do, may Allah accept it from us. The hadaf and the ghaya, the purpose and the objective behind it is what? What is it? To enter Jannah. In the Ramadan is that opportunity. The doors of Jannah are open. Rawa shaykhan Bukhari and Muslim both narrated. Min hadithi Abi Huraira. The messenger he said, إِذَا جَاءَ رمضان, If the month of Ramadan enters, فُتِّحَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ The doors of Jannah are opened. وَغُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ And the doors of the hellfire are closed and locked. We hear this hadith. You even heard it this Friday sermon it was spoken about, صح? But really fathom it, wallahi brothers. Think about it. The doors of Jannah are opened. And the doors of the hellfire are closed. Meaning it's a month where it's a, a, a path to Jannah. That's it. So for you to create a route to the hellfire, there's a bad chip inside you. There's a bad heart that you have. The doors are locked. The shayateen are chained up. All you just have to do is exert the effort and work very hard. Anything I've said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaytan and Allah and his messenger are both free from it. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.